Little boxes on the hillside, little boxes made of ticky tacky, little boxes on the hillside, little boxes all the same. There's a pink one, and a green one, and a blue one, and a yellow one, and they're all made out of ticky tacky, and they don't face the right way. Hey guys, the sun's that way! <laughs> A passive solar house utilizes the sun in the wintertime for heating and it protects the structure in the summertime from overheating to keep the house nice and cool. If you're building something, you're spending the money anyways, it costs no more money to do it properly. This drastically reduces our heating bill to almost nothing and drastically reduces our cooling bill and air conditioning bill to next to nothing. There's no moving parts or anything to screw up. It's all in the, how you situate it and how it's designed. Some of these design principles include using the proper percentage of glazing and type of glazing on the south side of the house, as well as the proper geometric overhang to protect the summer sun from coming into your house at all. Greenhouses are a little bit different because plants want full sun. So we have to deal with a little bit extra heat loss from over glazing, but it's fully glazed because we're growing plants in here and plants want as much sunlight as possible, especially on the short days, as well as we don't have an overhang on the outside and this isn't designed like a passive solar house because we're going to use the greenhouse in the summertime as well. But in the summertime, the greenhouse is opened up to the outside, whereas in a passive solar house, it's not opened up to the outside. In a passive solar house, you want to block all that sun. I have an alert in my phone calendar for every couple of weeks to remind me on a sunny day to mark where the sun is on the front of my house. Here, let me show you. Right above the window is the winter solstice, meaning the sun is driving completely in my house. As the days get longer from there, we have February 1st, still getting full sun in my glazing. February 22nd, getting almost full glazing. All the way into March here, uh, getting partial sun because of the days are getting warmer. April, it's getting pretty nice outside, getting about half the sun in the house. End of April, and by May 15th, the window is completely shaded, and in the summertime, goes the sun is all the way at the bottom of my house, not even touching my siding. And then the summer solstice, here we go back up. Here comes the sun all the way up. Back to the winter solstice. If you're building new, you can get trusses specifically designed so the load point is right where you want it to be. So I have a four foot overhang on my house. This is for my latitude and the location of the sun in the winter and the summer. When you get specifically designed trusses, you have a little extra space to put more insulation. So my house has about R80 in the attic and uh, this is typically your coldest point and the toughest part to insulate. So I have no heat loss there as well. I also really like using white or light colored siding. I don't want the sun to be heating up my wall. That's hard on the structure. I want the sun, no solar gain on the wall, but I want all the solar gain on the glazing. When the sun drives in through the glazing, I want it to hit dark thermal mass. That's why I use this dark tile, both on the walls and on my floor. So wherever the sun is coming in, it is heating up to its maximum effect. I like to paint my shop concrete black, or actually this is acid stained. So whenever the sun hits it, I get more passive gain. You also don't even need lights in a passive solar building. Saving on electricity too. My house is nine foot walls. This window, there's enough room for the structural beam above the window and the window's three feet off the ground with a four foot overhang. This allows for full sun in the coldest part of the year and no sun in the heat of the summer. Some of this design principle is about function as well. You want the window three feet off the ground. This allows you to have a full size couch, any piece of furniture, or even a countertop. So this is specifically important on a tiny house, kind of like mine. 
You don't want particularly large windows on any other side of the house but the south. Just enough for some natural light and some ventilation. You do want some windows on the west side of your house so as the sun's going down and setting you're getting some uh, warmth in your house before it gets cold at night. You can even make some shading devices to protect the windows from the hot summer sun. Like this I made on one of my west windows. When selecting windows for your passive solar house, I'd suggest not getting the low E coating because you're not going to get any summer sun, only the winter sun in your passive solar house. And you want as much sun as possible. If you haven't seen my video on the double double window, uh, go check that out. But that would work just fine on the passive solar house as well. You actually don't want too much glazing on the south side of your house because your house will overheat. For example, today it's minus 22 outside and my house is overheating. We actually have the blinds partially closed. The amount of glazing will vary on your geographical location. So you can look into that. I can't help you because everywhere is different. It gets so cold where I live that that's a lot of heat loss. You want super insulated walls and a certain amount of glazing. Even the chicken coops passive solar. Come on guys, I'm trying to do a YouTube video. No respect. It's a little bit of a cross between how you do a house and a greenhouse. There's no plants that need the full summer sun, but the chicken coop and barns are open a little bit for some ventilation. Let's face it, animals aren't the cleanliest things and it can get kind of smelly in there. They need fresh air. So on the chicken coop, it's a little bit less of an overhang, gets a little bit of summer sun, but it's opened up. Their little chicken door is open, wide open in there. Won't be needing any natural gas on a day like today. It's only minus 20 and the sun's out. Passive simply means there's much less or no inputs. So less firewood, chopping, stacking, and hauling. Unlike solar electric panels, passive solar house is all in the design. There's no moving parts, nothing to screw up, nothing to maintain. It's awesome. Solar panels will only last a certain amount of time. They cost a lot of money. If you have batteries, those have to be maintained and replaced every so often. Passive solar house, there is no moving parts, nothing to screw up. It's here forever and ever, as long as this house stands. I don't know why this information isn't more widely used. It's nothing new. It's really simple stuff. Frankly, if you have a house not situated properly in simple design, it costs nothing more. I am a person that would never, ever, ever buy your house. I hope this gave you a good introduction to passive solar design and technology. Although it's not much technology, it's just building it properly. Sun's that way. And man, is it ever powerful. Thanks for watching. And the people in those houses all went to the university where they were put in boxes and came out all the same. There's doctors and lawyers and business executives and their houses are made of ticky tacky and they don't face the right way. Like and subscribe.